Hi, I'm Amy from White Acres and I help business owners feel really confident and proud about how the business looks so that they can feel that they can project that confidence when they're talking about it and be able to get more clients. So when I start a new project with a new client, I always ask them if they are okay for me to talk about the project on social media. With established businesses, this isn't usually a problem, but for pre-starts, they aren't always quite so keen. I think sometimes this is to do with a contract from their previous place of work where they aren't able to work yet, which is fair enough. But sometimes they just won't want to spill the beans quite yet. Maybe they're nervous of what other people will think, or they want to keep the idea a secret, at least for now. Or maybe they just want to have a big splash so they've got nothing and then boom, everything is suddenly in place. So here's some reasons why I think it's a good idea not to keep your new business a secret before you're really ready to begin. So firstly, I think it's a great idea to stir up excitement and intrigue. So even if you don't want to tell everybody everything right away, you can still start out by giving little small pieces of information. So coming soon, for example, or not long now. Um, so if you think about your business, it's like a trailer for a film and you can show small parts of the movie, so give away little bits of information to get people excited, but you don't have to reveal everything until you launch. And that way you can get people talking about you before your business even starts. And then when you are ready to make a song and dance about it, there are people there who are ready to listen. So say you're opening a restaurant and people would really like to see the progress and feel like part of the journey with you before they open. You could show them the flooring going in, you could talk about choosing the chairs, tasting for the menu, there'd be so much that you could talk about and include to get people excited before the doors open. So number two is it's a great idea to build up an audience for reasons I've already mentioned, but if you can get people excited about your business before you start, then you'll have people to tell apart from your mom when you begin. So building up an audience also means that you don't only have people to tell, but people to sell to. And it means that you'll have people who are able to share what you've been doing to other people as well. And you won't have to speak into the void when you have an announcement. You're starting early and that's worth doing. So you might even be able to make some bookings or some sales in advance. Number three, it's a great idea to make your audience a part of the story. I've already mentioned talking about your flooring or, you know, your tasting for the menu, but... When you're starting a business, it involves doing lots of exciting things, aside from the parts that I can help with, you know, like designing a logo or a website or a brand identity. Um, you, there's lots of things as well to do which are really exciting and are really visible signs of progress. You might be having meetings with investors or accountants or manufacturers or copywriters or marketers or photographers, or you might take delivery of products or be writing your program materials. There'll be loads that you're doing. And you can bring your audience along for the ride, asking them for recommendations and opinions, and also just showing them what's going on behind the scenes because people love a good story and they'll love being part of yours. Fourthly, it's a great idea to test the market. So if you're talking about your business before it starts, then you can ask questions, run surveys and listen to what people think. So maybe you were going to offer a product from purple and green, but people are really keen on orange instead. So you might want to change that. So people, you know, they might have questions. You might have questions about your preferred paper stock or about how much people might be willing to pay for something. You might want to talk to a focus group or pop along to a networking meeting. You could show your idea off and then you can pay attention to what people are saying about it. And this could be really, really valuable. And finally, you want to get some interest before you get going. That's five. If you're talking about your business before you start, then you might find that you already have people to buy when they're ready, when you're ready to sell. So you could even start your business with an offer for the people who joined your list before you began. Or, you know, maybe you follow us on a specific social media channel. And it means that you're not just starting out cold. You'll be able to launch to people who've been waiting for your product to be ready, your program to begin, people who believe in you, like you, and feel like they know you. So where are you going to get this audience from? This will depend hugely on what you do, but you'll need to spend some time thinking about who your ideal client is. So who do you want to work for? Who would buy what you have to offer? And then create a picture of who they are, give them a name, and then from that, work out where they are. And that's where you need to be. So you don't need to be everywhere. You just need to be where your clients hang out. This might mean creating social media accounts on the best platforms for what you do. It might mean attending events. It might mean advertising in the paper, which admittedly is tricky if you don't have anything to offer yet. But with a bit of clever thinking or a PR strategy, I bet you could come up with something. It might mean creating a freebie to build your email list before you focus on your offering and running ads to get people, your audience, to sign up. It might be that you spend some time in Facebook groups asking people what they think and sending them over to a Facebook page that doesn't have your branding on it yet. Or better yet, to a page to join your list. You don't need a website for that either. You can just get yourself a free MailChimp account and you can set up a form on there and direct people to that. You can join them with Twitter chats. You don't need to wait for your logo to be ready to get going. 
I know you want to look professional and amazing, but there's no reason why you can't use a photograph of you and a photograph of something relevant in the interim. So just start. You might want to mingle at coffee mornings or go networking, befriend people who own complimentary businesses or start talking to parents in the schoolyard. Collect emails to build your list. Um, if you don't have business cards yet, then, you know, be creative and invent some. You could write your email and your phone number on something memorable. So I was once given luggage labels. Um, or you could maybe grab a seed packet because your business is growing. Or individually pack tea bags. Or even just some really simple cards that you can run off on your home printer if you need to. You may need to grab a telephone directory and start making phone calls to ask for feedback or suggestions. I'm sure there'll be something that you can do to build your audience. So if you are starting a business, don't wait to have everything in place. Get going now. Because when you're ready, you'll be more ready and people will know who you are and you'll be ahead of yourself, which can only be a good thing. And let me know if I can help you. Just get in touch and I'd love to.